Seven years had quietly slipped by, each day blending into the next without much fanfare or significant change, until one unexpected day, everything changed dramatically. Out of nowhere, my ex-girlfriend appeared at my doorstep, and she wasn't alone. She was accompanied by a young child, approximately seven years old, who looked up at me with pleading eyes. Without any prior notice or warning, she demanded that I fulfill my child support obligations, insisting that I take responsibility for the child she claimed was mine. The atmosphere instantly thickened with tension, and just as I was trying to process the shock of her sudden appearance, my wife walked out into the scene. From that moment forward, the situation spiraled out of control with alarming speed, leading to a series of confrontations and emotional turmoil that I hadn't anticipated. Hello, Reddit community. I have a rather lengthy and complex story to share today, primarily because there's an extensive amount of background information that needs to be understood to grasp the full context of recent events. To begin with, let me introduce you to my ex-girlfriend, Cindy. She was 30 years old at the time of our relationship, and I was 23 when we first got together. Our relationship lasted for four years, having met during our college years. We connected deeply during those formative years, building a bond that we believed would last a lifetime. We decided to take a significant step by moving into an apartment together shortly after graduation, sharing a home and navigating the early stages of adult life side by side. For about a year, everything seemed to be going well, we were a team, supporting each other through the challenges that come with post-college life. However, despite our seemingly strong relationship, Cindy abruptly ended things without offering any explanation. This sudden breakup left me bewildered and searching for answers. Cindy was a year older than me and had been a senior in college when we first met. I was naturally quite shy and hesitant to approach her initially, which is why she took the initiative to ask me out. It was Cindy who first confessed her love for me after we had been dating for six months, a pivotal moment that solidified our commitment to each other. She was also the one who suggested that we move in together after graduation, believing that our relationship was strong enough to withstand the challenges of cohabitation. At the beginning, Cindy seemed like a wonderful girlfriend, supportive, loving, and dedicated. However, in hindsight, I realized that this was an incomplete portrayal of her personality. Beneath her affectionate exterior lay deep-seated insecurities that began to surface over time. I'm not entirely sure what triggered her constant need for reassurance, perhaps it was my own lack of initiative in the relationship or something else entirely. Regardless of the cause, Cindy was perpetually insecure and exhibited significant jealousy, especially whenever I interacted with other women, no matter who they were. Her jealousy wasn't just limited to close friends or romantic interests, even casual conversations with female acquaintances would spark her suspicion and discomfort. After numerous heated arguments stemming from these insecurities, I made the difficult decision to distance myself from all my female friends. Cindy's presence in my life had become so overwhelming that maintaining friendships with other women felt impossible without causing friction. This distancing wasn't limited to just my college friends, I also severed ties with friends from my school who had been by my side for over five years. Ironically, I'm reconnecting with them now that Cindy is no longer a part of my life, and my current wife is completely comfortable with my friendships, irrespective of gender. Back then, my social interactions were confined almost exclusively to spending time with my male friends. Even social outings like a guy's night out were off-limits. Cindy was convinced that such gatherings would be nothing more than excuses for us to frequent bars, get intoxicated, and potentially engage with other women. This restriction felt deeply unjust to me because Cindy prohibited me from seeing anyone without her consent, all due to her overwhelming insecurity. However, being deeply in love with her, I couldn't perceive how wrong this behavior was. Cindy constantly professed her love for me, insisting that she couldn't live without me or imagine a future without our relationship. Driven by the desire to marry her and build a life together, I endured these challenges, believing that our love would ultimately prevail despite the obstacles. Yet, as time went on, staying with her became increasingly difficult. Her suspicions and erratic behavior intensified, especially once we started living together. It felt as though I couldn't perform even the simplest tasks without her scrutinizing my every move. She would incessantly check my phone, track my whereabouts, and demand constant updates on my location. If I failed to comply, she would threaten to lock me out of our home upon my return. This level of control and lack of trust created a suffocating environment that made daily life a constant source of stress and anxiety. By the time we decided to part ways, our relationship had devolved into something deeply toxic. Despite the turmoil, I somehow found the strength to remain with her, clinging to the hope that things would improve. However, unexpectedly, it was Cindy who initiated the breakup. The catalyst for our split was an incredibly trivial misunderstanding that, in hindsight, was blown completely out of proportion. One day, 
My sister decided to visit me without any prior notice, which was unusual, because she typically informed Cindy beforehand to prevent any suspicions of infidelity. Cindy wasn't home when Lauren, my 33-year-old sister, arrived. Lauren had been at a friend's place and was permitted to meet her friends without raising any red flags. Her unannounced visit caught me completely off guard, and I didn't have the usual reaction of texting Cindy to inform her of Lauren's arrival. Instead, we spent about two hours chatting at home, enjoying each other's company until Lauren received an urgent call from her boss, prompting her to leave abruptly. The incident that led to our breakup revolved around a small, seemingly insignificant lipstick. As Lauren hurried to reapply her lipstick before rushing back to work, she inadvertently left it behind on the couch. The lipstick was so tiny that neither of us noticed it at the time. When Cindy returned home shortly after Lauren had left, she initially seemed cheerful and unsuspecting. However, her happiness vanished the moment she spotted the lipstick. She immediately sprang up from the couch, grabbed the lipstick, and I knew instantly that I was in serious trouble. There was no way she would overlook this minor detail. I attempted to downplay the situation by telling her the truth right away. I explained that Lauren had visited during her lunch break, had to reapply her lipstick before hurrying back to work, and had forgotten to return it to her purse in her rush. As I had feared, Cindy didn't believe a word I said. She pointed out that Lauren typically texts both of us in our group chat before coming over, which she hadn't done this time. Additionally, Cindy doubted that Lauren, who wasn't particularly into makeup, would bother to reapply her lipstick in our home. She was convinced that I must have been seeing another girl, and understandably so, she was furious. Cindy's reaction was explosive, she truly lost her composure. She began yelling at me, cursing, and throwing things around the house in a fit of rage. She first threw cushions, then books, and eventually grabbed the TV remote and hurled it toward me. I managed to duck just in time but realized I needed to escape the volatile situation immediately. I fled to our bedroom and locked the door, leaving me without my phone and unable to call for help. I was left alone in the room for about an hour while Cindy continued to berate me, feeling utterly betrayed. Her screams echoed outside the room like a banshee's wail, and I was genuinely terrified. Eventually, the yelling subsided enough for me to muster the courage to check on her. To my surprise, Cindy had left the house, leaving the door wide open. I didn't attempt to reach out to her for several hours, assuming she needed time to cool off. However, by midnight, when she still hadn't returned, I grew worried and tried to contact her. I discovered that she had blocked me, calls wouldn't go through, and texts were impossible. She had also removed me from all her social media accounts. Paranoid, I attempted to reach out to her friends, but they didn't respond either, likely having been blocked as well. For the next few weeks, I persistently tried to get in touch, but Cindy remained unreachable. After nearly a month of fruitless attempts to locate her, I had to accept that she didn't want to be found, not by me, at least. I was utterly lost without her, and the subsequent months were the hardest of my life. I couldn't understand how I managed to survive, my days were spent going to work, returning home missing her deeply, and pretending that everything was all right. Friends and family tried to convince me that I was better off without Cindy, but I couldn't see it that way. After a year in that tumultuous environment, I finally moved out of the apartment we had shared. I had hoped that staying might allow Cindy to find me again, but once I relocated and secured a new address, I abandoned any hope of reconciliation. We never achieved closure which became my greatest disappointment. The breakup left me feeling depressed, and I avoided interacting with women to prevent feeling like I was betraying Cindy. However, everything changed when I met my current wife, Amy. She was 27 and worked with me. Amy was incredibly kind, especially when I was new to the job. Her sweetness wasn't reserved just for me, she treated everyone in the office with genuine warmth. Amy was not only beautiful and intelligent, but also possessed a brilliant personality. Despite my resolve to never enter another relationship after Cindy, I found myself irresistibly drawn to Amy. Within a few months, we fell in love. We've now been together for almost four years and married for two. I'm happier than I've ever been, and I had nearly forgotten about Cindy, until she resurfaced unexpectedly. Last weekend, seven years after our breakup, which, to be precise, ended when Cindy abruptly left me over a petty misunderstanding, my wife and I were relaxing at home. Suddenly, the doorbell rang, and when I opened the door, I was greeted by Cindy dragging a seven-year-old boy right in front of me. She demanded immediate child support payments, launching into a tirade before I could even respond. She accused me of being an absent father and insisted that I pay the child support I had avoided for seven years. I was stunned, unable to respond as she continued to scream and vent her frustrations. It wasn't my fault that our relationship had ended the way it did, Cindy had left me without any explanation, and I was certain that the child she brought with her wasn't mine. 
My silence was born out of sheer shock, I couldn't find the words to counter her accusations. A few minutes into her rant, Amy came out to see what was happening. As soon as she laid eyes on Cindy, her demeanor changed drastically. Cindy's face lost all color, and it was clear she realized she was in a vulnerable position. I wasn't fully aware of the history between Amy and Cindy, but their interaction quickly escalated into a heated argument. They began yelling at each other, exchanging derogatory names and verbal attacks, while I stood there bewildered, watching my wife and ex-lady tear each other apart in front of our child. Amy eventually threatened to call the police if Cindy didn't leave, which made Cindy visibly unhappy, but ultimately, she took the hint, shot us both angry looks, and stormed out of the house, grabbing her son as she fled. After Cindy left, Amy turned her frustration onto me, accusing me of hiding my past relationship with Cindy and expressing disbelief that I hadn't been forthcoming about it. I was confused because I had always been open with Amy about my ex. The only thing I hadn't done was show her a picture of Cindy, but that wasn't intentional. I had lost my phone before moving into our new home, which contained all my photos with Cindy, and I had also deleted most of those pictures from social media to avoid the painful reminders of our failed relationship. Although there were a few group photos on friends' accounts, I had them removed to prevent myself from seeing images of Cindy. Amy never asked for these photos, and it seemed too burdensome to retrieve them when she hadn't shown interest in seeing Cindy. When I explained this to her, she didn't understand why I hadn't shared more about my past, despite my transparency in other areas. Amy became increasingly angry, believing that I should have been more open about my history with Cindy. She accused me of being stupid and self-involved, asserting that she expected me to understand and respect her own traumatic experiences with Cindy. I tried to explain that I, too, had a difficult past with Cindy, but Amy didn't seem to grasp that connection. This lack of understanding deeply offended her, leading her to label my past as the worst ever before abruptly ending the conversation and ceasing all communication. I felt utterly responsible for the rift between us, even though I didn't fully understand what I had done wrong. It was a sensitive and emotional situation for both of us, yet I felt unfairly blamed for something I couldn't control. Thankfully, Cindy hasn't contacted me since, but I worry that if she continues to meddle in my life, things could deteriorate even further. Update 1 Hello again, everyone. I wanted to express my gratitude for all the supportive comments and advice you've shared regarding my predicament. Many of you asked whether my wife had ever mentioned being bullied in the past, and the answer is no. She never disclosed that she had been relentlessly bullied, and I only discovered this aspect of her history after speaking with my sister-in-law. Recognizing that I was in the wrong for not knowing, I decided to take matters into my own hands and visit Amy at her parents' house. I was determined to make our relationship work and knew that resolving this conflict was essential, even though the situation wasn't entirely my fault. It became clear that it was a matter of us against the problem, not Amy against me. Yesterday, after nearly a week of not communicating, I finally visited Amy. Both my in-laws and Amy were surprised to see me, but I didn't wait for any formalities. As soon as the door was open, I approached Amy and enveloped her in a heartfelt hug. She was initially taken aback but responded by hugging me back tightly. We held each other for several minutes in silence, both acknowledging the tough week we had endured. The specifics of who was right or wrong no longer mattered. Once we separated from the embrace, Amy immediately apologized, tears streaming down her face. She explained that she had feared losing me forever due to her meltdown after Cindy's visit and her subsequent behavior. Her parents and I were there to comfort her as she cried, and I felt a mix of relief and guilt. Relief that she recognized her unreasonable actions and guilt for not reaching out sooner, which had contributed to her breakdown. After our heartfelt conversation, Amy packed her things and returned home with me. While things aren't entirely back to normal, we're actively working on healing and making sense of everything that transpired over the past week, including Cindy's unexpected visit. We're determined to uncover the reasons behind her appearance and address the underlying issues together. Update 2 Hey everyone, we finally uncovered the true reason why Cindy came to our home. As you might have guessed, it was purely for financial gain. From the moment she arrived, Cindy made it clear that her sole intention was to extract money from me by demanding child support for a child that, upon closer inspection, doesn't appear to be mine. Amy and my sister-in-law made numerous calls to investigate the situation further, especially since their families had been estranged for years. They discovered that Cindy wasn't actually my child, but had been involved with another man for a couple of years. In fact, I suspect Cindy might have been seeing someone else during the last few months of our relationship. Although I lack concrete evidence, this theory makes sense given how abruptly Cindy ended things and seemingly moved on without a second thought. It's plausible that she was already pregnant when she left me and used the situation with my sister as a convenient way to exit our relationship. 
Cindy's family was largely aware of her relationship with the other man, but I was kept in the dark due to her controlling nature, which prevented me from communicating with her family unless she was present. Her sudden appearance was a deliberate attempt to intimidate me into providing financial support. It turns out that the other man had also abandoned her a couple of months ago, leaving her without a steady income as she had quit her job after the relationship began and the baby arrived. Her financial struggles were exacerbated by her parents' refusal to support her, as they wanted to save for their retirement and couldn't afford to help her suddenly. This explains her desperation. After Cindy encountered Amy at our home, her family lost contact with her, but I'm confident that someone will eventually locate her, either to offer assistance or to report her to the authorities, especially considering rumors that she has scammed others out of money in the past. While these are just rumors, given her actions with me, I wouldn't be surprised if they turned out to be true. Update 3. This is a late update, but Amy and I have decided to take proactive steps to mend our relationship by enrolling in couples counseling and individual therapy. We realized that Cindy's reappearance had shaken the foundations of our marriage, and we needed professional guidance to navigate the emotional turmoil it caused. Our lives were thrown into disarray by just one visit from Cindy, and we're determined not to let that happen again. Regarding Cindy, we've heard from a few relatives that she is now living with another man she met online just a few days ago. He was immediately infatuated with her and has offered her a place to stay. Cindy's parents are devastated by her behavior, especially since she has told them that they are no longer welcome to see their grandson. This isn't about taking sides, it's about the reality that Cindy's parents had turned their backs on her when she needed them the most, leaving her to fend for herself. Cindy's actions have been a consistent source of pain, both for her family and for Amy and me. Her parents were never the easiest people to get along with, and it seems Cindy has inherited some of those challenging traits. Amy and I feel deeply sorry for the poor child who is now bearing the brunt of her mother's poor decisions. Through all these updates, Amy and I are committed to healing and strengthening our relationship. We're working together to understand and overcome the challenges posed by Cindy's interference, ensuring that our marriage can thrive despite the chaos that has erupted in our lives. We remain hopeful that with time, patience, and professional support, we can move past this turbulent chapter and build a happier, more secure future together.